The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. If you've got an idea you'd like to see built, why not send it to The Ben Heck Show? Oh yeah, pinball effects. This is the life. Uh, uh, oh man, you know, this isn't really the same as a real pinball machine. I'm kind of tired of it. Uh, reaches over there. They can get that. Uh, uh, so close. If only I had the force. Uh, wait a minute. I don't need the force. I'm Ben Heckendorn. I could just build an automatic video game disc changer. I mean, people have actually been asking me to build one for years now. Yeah, all I'll need is an Xbox 360 and an old school CD disc changer system. All right, so our friendly neighborhood camera person, Allison, picked up uh, two CD disc changers for us. Now, you kids may not remember, but in the days of her iPod, this is how we listened to more than 15 songs at once. So let's take a look at this. Uh, looks like you put the discs here, and then they're probably lifted or pulled into some sort of mechanism in the back, which I guess we'll see once we take it apart. Let's see what's inside. So it doesn't, it doesn't take the disc to the player, it takes the player to the disc. All right, we have the Sony here, let's try this. Oh, it's got lights in it, see? That's kind of funny. This is why I wanted uh, to get two of these units, so they'd be different, so we can see which one works better. And uh, this one, it brings the discs to the player, and that one, it takes the player to the discs. So that gives us two different modes of operation, so that's a good thing. This is made in Japan. Okay. So I guess the, the question is, what is the better mechanism for loading it into an existing drive? I really, well, I don't want to tear the Xbox apart, although it would probably make it easier. There's a little hole in the top here, so if you stick a rod into it, it should eject the disc. There we go. If I did have to remove the drive from here, we could still leave the Xbox the same as it is. We would just have two cables coming out of it for the disc drive. One would be the SATA data, SATA data, serial advanced technology attachment and then we'd have a power cable going to the drive. So I'd have to do one of those power cable extensions again for the disk drive, but it's not a big deal. But uh, actually it'd be better for the Xbox because there'd be less heat inside of it because you don't have the disk drive working. So what you would do is you'd put your Xbox near this and the disk drive from this would be placed into this. So this would be like a giant disk drive for you and then this would be its normal self. All right, um, there's two things I like about the Sony model. One. It's the discs that move, not the player head. And two, um, well, I guess that's the only thing I like about it. So I'm gonna take it apart a little further and see if we can't uh, reverse engineer this. See, I'm gonna see how complicated this part is. Here's a good trick when you're doing this. <laughs> part like that, put the screws back in whenever you can so you know which the, what the correct screws are. I've color coded these ribbon cables, a little bit of green and uh, blue. Then I colored it here too, so I know where, where they go when they go back together. Okay, so this part here should magnetically attach to this, which is how they still work today. We'll basically swap out the CD player from this thing and replace it with the DVD player, but the rest of the mechanicals will remain the same. Question is, can we make it fit? Okay, this, this part is connected to this part, so I believe we're gonna have to remove the carousel actually to safely lift this out. Uh, could we be so lucky that it's only one screw? I don't think we're gonna be that lucky. <laughs> nope, we're not that lucky. Okay, so we pulled this module out and it's nice how it comes out in one piece, that's useful. So <laughs> you've got um, a rack and pinion gear system here. 
which is actually kind of how that CNC machine works. This gear rotates down here and it causes this to slide back and forth, which is actually also the same system they use on uh, disc trays that come out on these systems. So this one gear basically brings a disc in and also locks it in place. So that's good. So the main trick at the moment is we need to take off this um, CD drive mechanism and replace it with the modern DVD drive mechanism on the Xbox 360. Oh man, I'm not used to opening these things delicately, but I want it to still look nice. So maybe I should check some online tutorials on how to do this the right way. Here's the inside of the Xbox. Um, yeah, so we don't want to change too much, but the two things we need to do is we need to attach a longer SATA cable here for the disk drive, and then we need to extend this out to power the disk drive. All right, so we've got this extended cable on, so these are about the same length, so we can, well, yeah, they're about the same length, so we can put the, um, this deck next to this. So we're just gonna pack these wires back up, and then we're gonna put the Xbox back together, and then we should be able to run the Xbox with the hard drive removed from it. All right, so here we're just testing to make sure the disk drive is working before we put it back together. Open tray, put the game in, close tray. Yeah, it looks like we wired it up right. It's almost like I've done that like 20 times before. Look at all that empty space in there. This system should actually run cooler. DVD drive actually generates a decent amount of heat. Screw that piece. Better airflow this way. All right, so there's the Xbox. It's its own little piece. And what we'll probably do is you'll have it next to the CD changer like this. You gotta be careful with the uh, disk drives for Xbox 360 because they're keyed to the system. So we've got to transplant this onto here. And uh, I highly doubt these four screws are going to match up one, one. We, no, we wouldn't be that lucky. That doesn't mean we can't make it work. All right, so right now it's in the open position. And when you go to put the disc back in, this one motor runs both the tray and the raising and lowering of the reed head. So when it, when it activates, see how the head comes up like that? And then it, there's a switch which tells it when it's reached its limit. And then you drive the motor here and then you look at the switch here. So these are easy to see points. Basically, we'll have to reconnect these to other things on the drive so we can trick this into thinking it's operating the normal way when really it isn't. So one of these posts actually looks like it lines up you know, for some reason. The other ones are kind of high, so we've definitely got to remove a lot of this uh, beige plastic so this can fit in. We can't completely remove the beige plastic piece because it is the part that is actually actuated down here and brings the disc assembly in, but we can remove quite a bit of it and still have it work. So that's what Mr. Dremel's for. Happy birthday, Element 14. Nom, nom, nom. Two years ago, they launched the first dedicated electronics community, and today they continue to innovate by offering members some of the most useful features in the industry, including free CAD software and new product solutions like the exclusive low-cost Element 14 and Freescale XL Star development board, opportunities to test free products when you sign up for their community road test program, access to supplier and industry experts, and most recently, the Node, the one-stop workspace for embedded system design engineers, which we announced in our last episode. To celebrate the festivities, Element 14 will be giving away hundreds of free gifts to new members who register between now and July 31st. They will also be giving away product prizes to existing members, like Fluke Multimeters and more. Visit element14.com today to celebrate. Here's where the disc is captured, right there. Now what this mechanism here needs to do is tilt up. Now there's a peg back here that is actuated by the rack and pinion that will lift it up. So what we need to do is put a hinge here. Now there was a plastic hinge or a pivot point on the old piece, but that's long gone. So I'm actually going to try attaching these little brass hinges from the hardware store. So now I've got to drive some screws through here and uh, hopefully it'll rotate on these hinges. So I'm putting some tape here. So the um, disc will be in the right position when this locks in place. So I need to put a spacer here. I want the disc to be level, so so I'll make sure I get this as accurate as possible. The Xbox 360 spins discs at a rate that is best described as scary, so we want to make sure we do this right. Before I get too much farther with um, making this work mechanically, I'm going to make sure that the disc is going to work, so I need to reattach 
the um, circuit board for this. So we'll need to have some spacers so this kind of stands off the surface, like that. And then we're also going to need to sink these items that have the thermal pads on them. So we gotta remember to do that. But we just got it hooked up just good enough to make sure the disc will read. I mean, we're not gonna wanna run it very long in this position, so I'm gonna have to actually hold a couple things manually right in front of the deadly disc. All right, let's see what happens. This is scary. Beep. Oh my God. Okay, it recognized the disc as Street Fighter 4, so it still works. So now we just have to button it up mechanically and put it into the CD changer. Give me the ring, Frodo. You are not yourself. I ask only for the power to play this video game lazily on my couch. Okay, why is the disc? There must have been something before that stopped the disc from going too far back. I wonder what though. I think I solved the problem with the disc positioning. I put a little metal bracket here, which will stop this arm when it comes all the way through. So let me show you how it's gonna work. The disc will sit here in the carousel. These arms come and grab it, then they pull it in. And then this little notch here will prevent this arm from going too far forward, see? And then that'll line up to catch the disc. Then the arms pull apart and then the disc rotates freely. That totally didn't take two hours of screwing around at all. I mean, it might have, but we didn't film it. All right, so I got these two DC motors. Yeah, so let's try running them. Hope we don't blow them up, that would be bad news. This should make it do a load cycle. Okay. Maximum was uh, 160 milliamps. That's not that much, so. Yeah, I'm, now I'm thinking about how I'm gonna control this. I think I'm just basically gonna throw out all the existing electronics and uh, power this with an Arduino or something. All right, so load. And unload. There's switches here and here, so that's when it knows it's at the end of the cycle, so we'll have to hook up these switches so we know when to uh, deactivate the motors. And then, so this motor here does the load sequence and this one um, sequences the main disc. So by using these switches here, this opto sensor and these sensors here, we should be able to basically control the disc changer ourselves. All right, here's the opto sensors from the uh, bottom of the unit. So I'm just gonna show you how we're gonna make these work. I just kind of figured out what the pinouts were. Uh, yeah, positive voltage here and then we have negative here. And then on this side, this is the um, infrared transmitter and this uh, transistor here detects it. So in a circuit, it works like this. When we power it up, if we put the probe on the sense pin, we should get five volts. And so when it's interrupted, it'll go low. Let me show you that. Come on, hold still. There it is. All right, so that's how those work. So yeah, we can hook those right into the Arduino and sense them. We're gonna order some motor controllers and uh, Control this using the Arduino and interface it with the Xbox and some sort of remote controller. I mean, because we don't want you to get off your couch to change this. This is going to be totally automatic. I made this very...
stupid cereal port keep disappearing. God. Maybe this Arduino is dying. My precious Arduino I got from a vending machine. You guys been having a good show? Here it comes. No, people have. I just have a weird watch. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> just what I need, another microcontroller. Okay, so now we're trying previous disc and next disc. It's gonna go two in one direction and then two in the other. Now it looks like the um, clockwise or next disc uh, works pretty good, but previous disc, let's say it's undershooting a little bit, so I'm gonna have to tweak the code. All right, so one thing I did differently with this is the motor that loads and unloads the disc, I actually hooked that up to the Xbox driver because the Xbox, used a motor to unload and load the disc and the switch. So by hooking this motor, where this motor went, I hooked it up to this motor, so the Xbox itself does this part. So we don't have to worry about that. All we have to worry about is advancing the disc. All right, so now the Arduino is set that it's not going to try to advance the disc when the system is closed. But if we open the system, it should, okay. Yep, now it's trying to advance the disc. All right, so it knows when and when it can't advance the disc. So right now, think of the disc tray being open on the Xbox and we're switching discs in and out. But then, once you've selected your disc, it will stop. Oh man, that was a hard project. Hard day's work. Now I can come home, sit down, and play all my Xbox games without ever getting off the couch. Ah, let's see, which game shall I pick? No, maybe, eh, oh, that might be good. Ah, that's the one. Finally, I can play this game. Ha, ah, yeah, life is good. <gasps> That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we'll be working on home automation. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.